So the first thing when you start a project is you need to look at what other sites really uh, tend to re steer towards your own preferences. Um, being a developer or a designer, your, um, your preferences may be different to what your client may want. So it's always best to work with your client. So uh, we're just looking here at a, a cartoonist website. So I just pulled, pulled out. So there's two here, and the other one's cartoon uh, movement. And they're both totally different in terms of layout. So you may want to decide, you know, maybe I like this side, maybe I like that side. Maybe you don't like either of them. Maybe, you know, your client or you want something like apple.com, you know, simple. And you just like that. You like the layout. It's easy to navigate. Everything's, um, you know, laid out correctly. It's not cluttered, maybe, compared to this one. It just seems there's just too much. So that's something to decide. And one thing to remember is, as um, as, we're, as as viewers, when we're going to websites, we always read from the left to right. So it's more of a Z. So we start on the left, and then we move to the right, and then we come down. That's how we read. So you're generally going to have most of the important sections on the left and at the top. So you really won't need to or should not have your navigation at the bottom, where you know the visitor goes there and just cannot find the navigation buttons. So I'm going to try to create... Um, something um, similar to using Mockingbird, Go Mockingbird. The link is actually online. There's a link and you do need to use uh, Chrome or Firefox. So I've actually launched Go Mockingbird which is a wireframing uh, tool. So I've actually launched Go Mockingbird which is a wireframing uh, tool. There's lots of other wireframing tools but this is it's a freebie. So it gives you a good idea how you want to structure your page. You could use a pencil and paper. That's entirely up to you. So this is the alternative. The benefit here is, you know, you can remove stuff, you can add content, and you could take stuff off, and so on. So it's it's effective when you're making changes. Now, if you refer to the uh, the sites I was looking at earlier on, uh, what do I really like about this? Maybe I like the uh, the navigation here. You know, I like the navigation at the top. And I like this sort of cartoon sort of strip here. So I'm going to have something similar to that. So I'm going to go to my wireframe and I'm going to include say a navigation at the top. So and I'll just have navigation. And some of you probably wonder, well, I could just do that in the HTML code. Yes, you could. But you know, at the end of the day, you may not like it. So what the, the hours that you're going to spend creating it, you just may be disappointed. And then I'm just going to have uh, some kind of a, a comic strip. OK, it seems uh, Chrome has crashed. Let's relaunch that. Okay, so now if we continue, I'm I want some kind of a comic strip here. So I'll just copy and paste. And basically, this is just giving you an idea of how you want to lay your page out. And so I could space them out a bit and gives you kind of an idea to, you know, do you want this here? It allows you the opportunity to play around with different objects. Now, uh, coming back to the other side, you know, maybe I like some kind of a, a slideshow here. And we're not going to cover slideshows, but there are lots of slideshows you could incorporate using um, JavaScript. JavaScript allows you to and create a slideshow. So I could have some kind of a, a larger slideshow at the bottom. And that's how my page is going to be, and I could have some kind of background image. It doesn't look great right now, but it, then you may think, well, actually, I don't like that here. I prefer the slideshow at the top, and I want to move everything else at the bottom. So it's going to save you time and give you the chance to play around with your objects. You know, maybe I'll go with that. Actually, maybe not. I'm going to change. You know, I want the the comic strip to be here, so everything's kind of lined up. You know, I want it there, and I want my sort of slideshow to be right here, which seems it seems more sort of balanced. It seems cleaner. Uh, so this doesn't have to be a slideshow. You could say, you know, maybe I just want text here, so I just want text. So you could have uh, text for each comic strip. So I could say, you know, maybe I want something like this. So you don't always need to go with, you know, what's out there. 
you know, the typical website has a navigation bar and that's it. It's always best to um, think outside the box, something a bit more unique. You know, some of you may be creative and you may want to try uh, something new. By all means, go ahead. So I'm not expecting, you know, your website to be like the typical sites uh, examples are provided. So um, by all means, think outside the box. So you created the home page, then you can go to the uh, about page. So the about page will, of course, have the uh, the nav bar because every page should be consistent including the color scheme and the navigation bar if I want my navigation bar to be at the top every page should generally have the navigation bar there okay, following that I could maybe have some kind of an image and then some text Of course, you may want a footer, so I'm going to switch back and I'm going to say, well, actually, I do want a footer at the, the bottom. So I'm going to include a footer. And my footer will generally have links, copyright, and so on. So I can move this up a, up a bit if I want to. and then I'll do the same thing with the um, about page so I'm just going to make sure all pages are consistent that includes a color scheme what many students tend to do you know they think it's perfectly fine they'll have say, for example a blue color on the home page as a background then suddenly you click on the about or another page it changes to purple so you need to make sure everything is consistent ex with the exception of content so um, wireframing is a key component when you first start building your web page. It allows you to come out with different ideas before you start coding. Now once you've done all this, um, now you would start creating the individual containers. And remember we did containers for the nav bar with the footer. So that's, these are all going to be generally containers. So your nav bar will keep all, have all the links. And then you can start styling, you know, what kind of color scheme. Um, once you come up with the layout, it's a good idea to do the color scheme. And um, where do you get the color scheme from? So to get the color scheme, you need to go to Adobe. So to get the color scheme, you need to go to Adobe. Color.com. I believe that's the one. Yes. Leave this page. Uh, color. Adobe. Okay, color. Adobe. So now you've come up with kind of the basic layout. <coughs> There, once again, you can still look at other websites and see, do those different colors work? Maybe this background, this tends to work with the gray shade. Maybe it doesn't. Um, some of them don't. It just seems there's just so many colors here. That's because there's some advertising on here, too. So if you were to get rid of this section here, it will look more balanced than maybe other ads. Uh, following that, you can actually explore there's millions of different colors out here. Uh, you can look at most used, most popular, and then decide on what color you want. You can edit colors. So if you like a particular color scheme, you should allow you to make edits and tweak them. So once again, you can spend some time here uh, building your color scheme or your color theme for your website. So yes, so um, so for example, if this was a color I wanted, there's all the RGB code, the hex code. So you just need to make sure you copy and um, paste them. You make a note of these hex codes. So you don't need to just go to a, a hex library. You can be specific in you know, what you want to play around with. Uh, sometimes um, the client may give you a logo. It may have particular colors that they may want to incorporate into their website. And you can also do that. So, for example, you know, there's a logo on this website. I'm just going to take the screenshot of this website, then launch this into Photoshop or Fireworks or any other graphic tool. So you're not limited to just these uh, applications. Okay, so once uh, Fireworks is up, you know, I'm going to create a new document. And I just took a screenshot. Of course, you may have the Okay, so once uh, Fireworks is up, you know, I'm going to create a new document. And I just took a screenshot. Of course, you may have the actual logo. 
you know, as a vector image or a particular <coughs> native file format. But I've just taken the screenshot, so I need to know what that red is. It's not just the typical red. So what you can do is you can use a, a color picker, and I'll just go to the canvas, and you can hover over the different colors, and you will see what that color code is. There's the hex color code. So once again, you can either just go to the uh, the bucket. Come on. You could go to the bucket, and then you can select the different color, and you can hover anywhere just to see what the what the hex codes are or the RGB codes, either of them. So once you've got the um, the basic layout, of course you will need content. Content takes a while. So remember, whenever you look at other websites, images do make a website pop out much better than just text. So that's another thing. Whenever you look at images, it's always good to find images that fit the color scheme. I mean, you can't suddenly put a green image maybe next to a sort of a yellow type of theme. You know, it's just going to uh, clash. So it's always good to look for images that fit the color scheme of the uh, the website. <coughs> 